Now, contrary to what people believe, the dark web isn't actually this fabled crime-topia. And a lot of what goes on here actually happens in a lot of these subreddits like this one. Nevertheless, I'll mention a few things I've seen and categorize them for convenience. So the first category I'm going to call meh, not really that bad at all, surface stuff. And that would be drug websites that sell hallucinogens, heroin, cocaine, and other things like that. Then you have various gun-selling websites that sell all types of firearms, semi-automatic, automatics, you name it, military-grade weapons, it's there. You can buy it. An anonymous information dump to tip off journalists. Then you have your various Bitcoin websites claiming that a hundred times your Bitcoin wallets when you invest with them, you know, the typical scams. And then pirated books, movies, media, archives, etc. Now, to the next category, and this is what I would call things I'm slightly worried about, but you should take with just a pinch of salt because you don't know how true they are, and that would be guys claiming to fulfill requests for euthanasia regardless of location, red room websites most likely designed to be fake money stealing schemes, and then things like ban nuclear government test documents, and I'm not really sure if they're credible but things like that exist. If there's a hoax, there's a way, folks. Now to the final category. And these are the things that are actually quite unnerving to me. And these things are pedophile forms dedicating to ensuring and comforting pedophiles that their sexual fetishes is not a bad thing at all. Mafia hit websites that look very legitimate considering that they include newspaper articles, and as far as I know it, that website has been taken down. There's also New Age religion-based techniques based upon, like, pain discipline, which doesn't seem New Age to me at all. And then there's a virus hosting website that's specifically designed to dox whoever enters it. So, you enter it, you get a virus, all your information is stolen and sold there. Needless to say... I wouldn't recommend trying to find any of the aforementioned websites, and I specifically not mention the actual names for that reason. So the story goes back to 2016. At that time, I was in my third year of my bachelor's degree, and I loved fooling around on the dark web in my free time. I especially got hooked during my semester breaks, and would spend hours on tour finding websites and links that actually worked. I was trying to get my hands on anything interesting. I really wanted to uncover the mystery that shrouds the dark web. But weeks would go by and I'd only find poorly designed, slow loading, shitty websites. That's not what I thought when I would think about the dark web. Nobody thinks of shitty websites from the 90s. So what I managed to discover is that a lot of people talked in anonymous chat forms because they're trying to crowdsource hot links to some deep web websites. So I was randomly initiating chat with some strangers and terminating them in a couple of minutes and then the Tor browser would allot me with a new random stranger to talk to. You don't really get a pick who you want to talk to, it just, it's all at random. So I started talking to this one dude who claimed that he had connections with a very popular terrorist organization, and I'm not going to name them here. And then he claimed that a friend of his worked with this terrorist organization. So I just thought he was bluffing just to spook me. So I went all cool and I was like asking for proof. He then asked me to download a software where you could send media anonymously without getting tracked. In the chat room I was in, you couldn't do that. So, through this new software, he sent me two videos. Those two videos were uncensored, unphotoshopped, glory videos of brutal beheadings of two civilians. At this point, I was completely freaked out. He then went on to tell me that the police were after him. And when I asked why, 
He told me about his hobby of experimenting with pet animals. He then proceeds to tell me how he has choked and strangled, put acid on the skin of these animals, how he suffocated them in glass containers, burnt and tried so many other horrific ways of killing cats and puppies, just because it was satisfying to him. And at this point, I couldn't keep talking to him anymore. I had to close that damn chat window. I had to delete that browser and all the software on my computer. And I felt so stupid for putting myself in that kind of situation. And I realized it's such a creepy fucking world out there. And you never know who you're talking to over the internet. <laughs>